Hello, everybody. So my number one YouTube video by a long way is the one about, it's completely black, by the way, no, nothing. And it's the one about how um, King Atlas was the first king of Mauritania. And therefore, Mauritania is pretty obviously Atlantis. Of course, that's following up from quite a famous video by um, Bright Insight. And in turn, since Graham Hancock, there's a few other people to talk about. So I thought I'd sort of get into that, sell out if you like, and, and sort of work out what do YouTube people want, at least the ones that stumbled upon my video. And perhaps I should look at something that I know about that I can add to that conversation that people want to hear about. And the simple answer is that, I mean, I, I'm... I'd like to think I'm fairly good. I, I pretty much have a career out of analysing information. And it's not just the, well, it's the past, it's the present. And if you analyse information in the present, you're often described as a conspiracy theorist. Although if you work in certain industries, you'll be called an intelligence analyst and you can work in an area where you find out that that's not a lie at all. Um, now, that's not to say that every conspiracy theory out there is completely true. Of course, the majority are false. But it's also not to say that conspiracy theories as a group are necessarily false. They're not. And, I mean, we've got conspiracy theories going back in time that we were absolutely sure were false. Somebody's just made up. And I even point to the Atlantis one. And I think people calling that a myth quite ill-informed. I mean, there's elements of it that are probably not true, but the idea that it was completely made up is foolish. There obviously was a place called Atlantis, and I'd say pretty obviously that place is in Mauritania, uh, or in what is now Mauritania, although it was at the time called Mauritania as well, just with an E instead of an I and slightly different borders. But... You know, it hasn't even changed name. It's called the Atlantic Ocean. So, I mean, if, if even if we look at, like, present-day things, like, let's say, for example, the war in Ukraine. If you look at how American media is presenting it, and it's, I mean, ordinarily, if you're, a, if you're not in a time of war, the media talk about different things depending on whether they're left or right and so forth. But they're in lockstep because it's in a war. And this is because in a time of war, at least in USA, they control the media. They control both sides of the media. And this was very obvious in the Iraq war um, here in Australia, where suddenly people were being arrested for saying, well, actually, the war wasn't because of the way we thought it was. And I even go back to the, the, the founding of Australia, which was so 19, I'm sorry, 17. 70 when Captain Cook from England came here. Now, obviously, I say that with a precursor that Australia had people on it before that, and it was known to exist. In fact, Australia were trading with Indonesia, and Indonesia very much knew that Australia existed. And Australia had been trading with Indonesia for a minimum of 10,000 years, and up to 40,000. So it was very well and truly aware that Australia existed. And in turn, of course, Indonesia, that traded all the way back to Japan and China. So China knew that Australia existed, but England didn't. Isn't that amazing? It's amazing to think that for more than 10,000 years, the, the Europeans were going, hmm, wonder if there's a southern continent. Reckon there is. Let's call it Terra Australis. And people go, no, that's a myth. That's a myth. All the while, China knew it was there. Indonesia were trading with them. And Indonesia's influence spread up to Japan and spread up to China. What the hell, guys? Just ask China and say, hey, China, hey, 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 we know. Is this, is this great southern land real? And that's it. Yeah, we've been trading with them for 10,000 years. You know, and that's just, that's just an absurdity that we got that so wrong. And right now, there's a thing about it in Australia where people say, oh, you know, it was an invasion. Now, it was, in a sense. But we're missing a bit, big bit, and that is, that relates to the death of Captain Cook. So if you're in Australia, you, you get taught in school about the, the settling. Now, depending on 
when in school, which school you might be taught. Oh, it was the discovery of Australia. What a great day, January 26, 19, uh, 1788. Or at least you'd say, well, the finding of the first port, 29th of April, 1770, great day. Then they stuffed it up at 1788. But there's no real understanding. There's a sort of gap. There's an 18 year gap. And they said, well, we don't really know why Captain Cook was such a nice guy. And then Captain Philip came along. So 18 years later, and killed everybody. Why did he do that? We don't know. He's just a bad person. And that's what we're told. That's 200 years ago. 200, and, well, I suppose 240, 250 years. It's not that long, really. And, you know, so what, what, what was missing in that stage? And if you trace it back, you'd say, well, is it relevant that Captain Cook died in 1779? Like halfway between them? Discovered Australia 1770, 1779 died, 1788. This is nine years, nine years, nine years. Sorry, nine years, nine years, only two lots of nine years. And suddenly they're massacring as Aboriginals in Australia. Why, why is it relevant why he died? And then you look at why he died. So, well, he died in Hawaii. And they say, oh, yeah, Hawaiians killed him because they thought he was a god. Oh, okay. They thought he was a god. And they killed Aboriginals in return. And said, oh, yeah, but this is because the English people didn't understand that Hawaiians and Australians were separate. Why would they not understand? They're a long way away. They're not in the same region. They're clearly not the same people, or do they just think that everybody that lives that's sort of roughly that colour skin is the same? But actually, the reality is quite different to all of this. So what really happened? So when explorers were visiting nations that they might call less westernized we'll say i'm not going to say civilized i'll say westernized they would often well they'd go around and kill them but captain cook decided to take a different approach and he decided to pretend he was the god and he started this in tahiti and he did it in hawaii he did it he did it in australia too in australia and in most places they'd say oh look you know because they regarded if you had white skin you're a spirit person you weren't necessarily good or evil or godly, but you were a spirit person. You were you were not a person. You were not real. Not sure where they got this idea from, but that was what a lot of them believed. So he went around and, and learned some of the culture and learned how to impersonate a god and say, well, I'm a god. Good on him. Worked well. Went to Australia. They, they, they said, yeah, oh, okay, you're a god. Okay, you come in. He didn't know the language, but knew enough impersonation to impersonate a god that's what he thought they'd believe it worked straight aboriginals happy happily saying yeah come in gods come in spirit men will treat you and they, they didn't have any conflict and he went to hawaii no conflict and then he i think there was something to do with them wanting nails and stuff and blah 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 it came back and wanted more nails and they killed him there's different stories as to why they killed him, what he impersonated, but the general consensus is that he impersonated the wrong god at the wrong time, and it was meant to be a god that was in heaven, and therefore they would kill him to send him back to heaven. So there's a few alternatives that suggest that he did something wrong and they knew he wasn't a god, or they were punishing him for pretending to be a god when they knew he wasn't, blah, blah. End of the day, they killed him, and fairly confident they ate him. Now, Hawaiians weren't always cannibals, but they would eat somebody because they thought he was powerful and then they would have a bit of the godhead in them. So, now, in revenge for that, England were angry. Cameron Cook was not a disgrace at all. He was very famous, very well loved. And so the English, the English Empire was the most powerful in the history of the world and this was pretty much their peak. Um, and they wanted to get revenge and Hawaii was one tiny little island. And they're like, yeah, well, let's go down there and kill kill them, or, or you know, get some kind of revenge. You know, they would they were going to just take over that one little island. And the island that I'm referring to is Hawaii Island. I'm not referring to the group because the thing is, this is the thing: Hawaii was seven separate islands under seven separate kings. And when Captain Cook died, so 1779, there were seven separate islands and seven separate kings, and they went shit. We're going to be absolutely destroyed. You know, they had like 400 people living there or something. It was like, against the might of the British Empire, no chance. You know, they, they 
probably wouldn't have even beaten Captain Cook's ship if it hadn't been a surprise attack and if the ship hadn't been missing nails and all that sort of stuff. So let alone beating an entire empire, they had no chance. And so they were shitting themselves, basically. So what they did was that they said, well, the thing is England don't know how powerful we are. So we could have, we could be a lot more powerful than that. The fact that we killed one of theirs, they're a bit nervous about that. So what they did was that they pretended that they were bigger than they were. And part of that was allying the seven Hawaiian islands under one banner. Now, historically, of course, Tahiti controlled all of the Polynesian islands. So there's a triangle from Tahiti to Easter Island to, hang on, let's go, Tahiti's in the middle, Easter Island, Hawaii, and New Zealand. Anyway, it was a lot of islands. It's still not a lot of people, and they were never powerful. But the English didn't know how many people they were or how big their power was. So they actually tried to merge the seven Hawaiian islands and they had some wars over it. Some of them went willingly, some of them didn't. Eventually they did merge. And then the English went there and went, oh, no, we're not going to fight you. Look, you're too powerful. We don't know how strong you are. And the English thought it could have been the whole of Polynesia, though, which actually had ceased to exist as a nation because they split into separate nations about 700 years earlier. So, But they didn't know that. Or was it 500 years earlier? 500 years earlier, I think. Um, yeah, so they settled in a lot of these island nations, but they still existed sort of as loose allies. But even then, the English British Empire would never have, like, they could have wiped the floor with Polynesia, they could have just destroyed every little island nation, all of them all around the world easily, no problem whatsoever. It's just that this was this fear of the unknown. So because of this fear of the unknown, they went back and they said, well, we're not sure if we can beat them. We're not sure if this is a good idea. Let's get more information. And so instead they went there and said, well, let's go to um, their American colonies. So they had the 13 colonies and they went over there and said, well, let's go and defeat them and make sure they're com completely oppressed. So they went there and unfortunately that was a bit slow. And the American Revolution happened and the British were coming and the time they got there, it was too late. They couldn't win. And so they'd had two big defeats. So they'd, they'd lost the, the Hawaiians and then they lost the Americans. So they wanted to have a win. And then so they ended up coming to Australia. And of course, they didn't know how powerful the Australian Aboriginals were either. They knew it's a pretty big landmass. They didn't, weren't sure how big. But so they went there all guns blazing as they were going to do in Hawaii and then as they were going to do in America. And they kind of did do in America a little bit. They had a bit of a fight, but they lost. And then they went to Australia and just massacred a million people. Now, the thing is, the Aboriginals didn't fight back. They just welcomed them in because, first of all, they go, well, they're your spirit people. You guys are friendly. You're our gods. I mean, when they started dying, they were like, yeah, no, that's okay. Maybe we did something wrong. And so that's what happened. And the thing is, this is not really in any serious dispute. There's a few things we debate over, but most of that story is not really debated, but yet we don't talk about it. Now, by all means, people calling it Invasion Day are correct in a, to an extent, but they're missing a bit of information about that. Um, and to say that the, the British came to Australia and were completely evil is just completely false. And I think you find if you look through history and you look at groups that we describe as being evil, we're, we're missing a bit. And I say the same thing when we talk about like Russia and Ukraine. And if you want to talk about them as being a cartoon villain, you're missing a bit. It's not to say that what they're doing is completely good but nor is it completely evil. There's always a bit that's that's missing. And there are, of course, there are evil people, or there are people that are more evil than others. But that's absolutely true. But if we don't know these people, how do we know? And certainly, I don't think there's ever been an entire nation of people or entire race of people who were completely evil. So I think it is important to fill in those gaps. And this is what I really, I really look at. I'm not looking at conspiracy theories. I'm looking at 
solutions that fill in gaps of knowledge and whether that solution is described as a conspiracy theory because oh no we're not aware that atlantis was a real place and really was a real place it doesn't it's not existing anymore but we're not sure exactly what atlantis was like and some of the stories about how powerful it was might be wrong but the idea that it didn't exist is most definitely a lie it did exist and the idea of equally if we look at and i'm skipping around a bit but if we're looking at the history of Australia, we are missing a gap. We're missing that 18 year gap between 1770 and 1788. And that, that 18 years, I mean, if you look at what's happened in the last 18 years, and let's just say we decided not to mention it, you're missing a bit. You're missing the gap of, let's say, let's say that you've said, oh, okay, the, the, um, 1991 the end of the Cold War ended. 2014, suddenly Russia's invading Ukraine and they're evil. That's a 23-year gap. What happened in that 23 years? In that 23 years, we discovered that Russia weren't so evil after all. Let me decide they were. They invaded Ukraine. That didn't sit well with us. We decided they were evil. And then, 20, then we forgave them again. And then 2022, we decided they were evil again. Now, and yet, we had a period, 23 years, where we were shown every day that they were not evil. But in fact, we've been lied to for the 1949 to 1991 period. We had 42 years worth of lies. Um, not to say that they didn't do anything wrong, but it was more to say that we were missing things. And we've gone back to missing things again. And there's bits in the news all the time that are missing things. They're telling things from a certain perspective that are not true. And when we look back in history, no, they're not conspiracy theories. They're bits that are missing. And I think that it's important to distinguish between people just making things up to sell books and people honestly trying to find out the truth. And there is a there is a difference. You know, I'm not in any way suggesting that there are lizard people controlling the world. I don't think that's true. I don't think they faked the moon landing. I don't think that's true. But if you're looking at things like are we telling the truth when we say it's invasion day? We're, we're probably not. It's missing a bit. Are we telling the truth when we say that Russia is a cartoon villain in Ukraine? No, we're not. There's a bit we're missing. I mean, are they good? No, it's, but there's a bit we're missing. And I think I think that that's important when we look at these things. So anyway, so I, I thought I'd look at that one. Um, that's a bit that's missing in Australian history. And I just wanted to talk about that one today. Anyway, that's it for me. Bye-bye.